Our next Hall of Fame presentation is sponsored by the Cape Breton Regional Municipality. I would ask, especially since the presentation is being made to a very honored member of the Glace Bay community, I would ask Area MLA Dave Wilson to please come forward to make the presentation. Our induction in the athlete category is from Glace Bay, Mr. Nate Batten. Nate grew up in the environmental area of Glace Bay and he excelled in both baseball and hockey. And although his baseball days are over, he is still playing the game. At the age of 77 years, he still laces up the skates twice a week in the Huff and Puff League in Glace Bay. One of a family of eight boys and six girls, Nature's first love was baseball. He was a shortstop in midget baseball with St. John's, a squad that later combined with their rival, St. Anthony's, number 11, to form the Antonians of the Cape Breton Juvenile Baseball League, winning the maritime title in 1948. He was a member of the junior number 11 Antonians, coached by Jimmy O'Dell, won the maritime crown in 1952. Nature captain the minors, when the Cape Breton Senior Baseball League was formed in 1956, making it to the Cape Breton Finals that season. In 57, the last year Nash was active in baseball, the Miners won the Cape Breton title but lost out to Canyon in the provincial championship. Nash would eventually give up baseball and spend his summers with the family and commit to the sport of hockey in the winter. In 1950, he and the Glace Bay Miners bounced back to oust the Sydney Millionaires in the best of seven Cape Breton Finals 4-3. The next, the next season, he joined St. Mary's of Halifax. He scored the winning goal in the Halifax squad's 5-2 victory over Sydney in the deciding game of the provincial final. They saw action with senior teams from New Glasgow and Fredericton and played intermediate hockey until the Cape Breton Hockey League was revived in 1956 and he was captain of the Glace Bay Miners. He was named playing coach in the 1960-61 season, stepped down as coach in 65, and continued playing for the Miners until the end of 1966. He scored close to 200 goals between 1956 and 1966. He retired from Air Canada as a station manager or station agent at Sydney Airport in 1989 and worked another two years with Air Nova before retiring for good. But he never retired the stick and the skates. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nace Batman with a very good friend of his, Mr. Freddie Courtney.
in our association when we would meet, I would say, Nish, why aren't you in the Cape Britain Sports Hall of Fame? And he would say to me, no, not me. What about that? I'm thinking of, when I was thinking about Nish, I was thinking of those, that thought in my mind. With the exception of maybe of Nish himself here tonight, every one of us here tonight are convinced beyond any shadow of a doubt that he is a most worthy recipient and inductee into the Cape Britain Sports Hall of Fame. I noticed in his comments in the Cape Britain Post, quite an honour. Excited when I heard it. Now what do you think about that for a man of few words? <laughs> you know, I knew of Nish Patton before I really knew Nish Patton. And I guess that's what it is when you're involved in sports. You always hear about those people who excel at the sport of their choosing. Namely for Nish, and baseball and hockey. I had the opportunity and the privilege of playing with Nish in both sports. I was also fortunate enough to have him coach me in baseball and in hockey, and an association with him that extends over 50 years. Nish is, I consider, among those people that you'll meet along the road of life, and you're glad you met them, because they've enriched your life, and they've become good friends. We also shared many battles on and off the ice and on the hockey rink. In both sports, Nish was a fierce competitor with a great desire to win. But let me say this, that in spite of that desire he had <coughs> to win, he always set an example of hard work fairness, and good sportsmanship. He was always that. His competitiveness in the diamond and on the ice was self-evident, but never at the expense of gentlemanly conduct. I remember we were playing uh, an uns what I thought was a very unsportsmanlike opponent. Now, don't get excited. It wasn't a Cape Britain team. <laughs> and when it was all over, it was time to shake hands. And I, even I was thinking to myself, why are you going to shake hands with those fellas? I had my doubts. And Nace was coaching at that time. And he, he said, let's go, boys, and shake hands. And in my own mind, I was saying, why? He must, be, must have heard me thinking of, to myself. Because he said, it's the right thing to do. And so it was. Now that's even in the agony of defeat. A former referee of Nash's here the McMahon, he said, I have known Nash off and on the ice. I work with him, and he was always the perfect gentleman. Now, I have to say one other thing. Well, I want to say a few more things about it, but I think of the words always the same. You know people that know that they're always the same, they never change. I went down to see the Huffers and Puffers play this year because they were doing some uh, work for me for the Salvation Army. And uh, who's out there on the ice? I know it's Nate Spatton. And I looked at his picture in the paper when it came in the paper, and I look at him now, and at 77, he looks the same. <laughs> and you know, most of us get a little rounder. He didn't change. I guess he still weighs the same, or maybe even less. <laughs> Some people, I guess, just don't change. I remember. Uh, Vincy and I and Nace played together, as you know, as a team. And uh, one night I 